I didn't always look this way. I was the offspring of normal humans, albeit a pair of jocks. My sister received their physical gifts. I received asthma. I was a sensitive, awkward, 13-year-old dork, but I wasn't a serial killer. I had a best friend, Oscar, Lumbricus terrestris, worm to the layperson. The term nightcrawler has painful connotations and is only used familiarly amongst worms. Saying bait is a good way to get strangled. I also had a bully. This was eighth grade after all. He was captain of the boxing team, the cheerleading team, and the asphyxiation society. Back in seventh grade, he caught me in the shower singing Suddenly Seymour from Little Shop of Horrors. From then on, he terrorized me, but that was only half the story. Our city was widely celebrated for its bullies. My bully's father was himself a successful bully, owning an inner tube factory which employed every high school dropout for the last 20 years. His son was the cream of the next generation, a thoroughbred. Frankly, I was flattered. Oscar couldn't stand this about me. To him, I was the archetype of the battered spouse. The wedgies, the spitwads, the titty twisters, to my damaged psyche, they all meant love. I wasn't stupid. I knew the bully and I weren't friends. Not yet. But I had a plan. Today was pet day. Once I unveiled Oscar to the world, I'd be so popular, the bully would be begging to be my friend. The only snag in our five-minute presentation was Tina Brixton interjecting that worms have both male and female sex organs, so they're technically hermaphrodites, so calling a worm Oscar is sexist. By the end of class, however, Tina Brixton was all over me. You gotta let me hold him, big boy. I gulped. You don't mind mucus, do you? But when I reached for Oscar, he was gone. It wasn't supposed to happen this way. Oscar was supposed to bring me and the bully together. I guess the bully figured it would be funnier just to rip Oscar in half. Strange what you think about watching that happen. I recalled how I met Oscar. The playground. I was a lone wolf, a sandbox kid. This particular box was infested with cooties, but at least it was all mine. Correct that. It was Oscar's sandbox, too. Maybe you've had a friendship like ours. From day one, you were finishing each other's sentences. We had a similar sense of humor. Last time I told my praying mantis joke, it was this new kid in third grade who looked like he needed a friend. So I threw a praying mantis at him. He ran away, shrieking. Oscar got the joke. Fast forward 27 worm years to pet day. Long story short, Oscar lived. I tried to blubber an apology. Oscar cut me off. He said I was being a drama queen. Then he reminded me of the time I chopped his tail off. I'd been anxious to eat this frozen burrito and slammed him in the microwave door. On our way home from school, I said, look, I know who my real best friend is. You, man. Oscar looked at me. He asked if I knew what a hermaphrodite was. My bedroom. Playtime. I had just the thing to put a smile on Oscar's prostomium. A revenge fantasy. Starring me. I was about to run downstairs and grab us a Costco ice cream cake when I heard my mom get home from work. But when I looked outside, 
It was the bully's truck. Those were his footfalls through the kitchen. My kitchen. Whatever the reason, the bully was here for me. Maybe I could offer him a slice of ice cream cake. But Oscar, he coiled around my wrist, gave me that python squeeze, and I knew every segmented muscle in his body ached for revenge. His jaws snapped, his hair bristled. The bully lurked in the TV room. Oscar pointed the way. There appeared only one certainty. Somebody was going to die. I hadn't counted on it being my sister. But she wasn't dying. Quite the opposite. She was winning a tickle fight with the bully. In five minutes they hadn't noticed me and Oscar. I felt it coming on before it happened. I was thirteen years old and my blood sugar was low. And I sliced Oscar to bits. That pretty much killed our friendship.